Okay guys, welcome back to another episode of our AI created chat, well using AI to create a um, game and our game is Pong, uh, we're creating the simple side to side Pong game that you control two paddles either if you're playing multiplayer or single player you control a paddle each uh, and you have to try and bounce the ball from one side to the other and not get the ball to go beyond your paddle because then you lose a point and your your opposite your well your what's it called your opponent gets the point rather so in the first two episodes we started creating the game by adding in a ball and our two paddles i think we also added in our top up top and bottom boundary so that the ball doesn't go beyond those points and it bounces off um like it's seen a wall uh, i don't know if we've actually tested that we need to go in and see if we've tested that and see if it works or it actually works but yesterday's episode we ran into a little bit of a problem and that was the ball when it hits the paddle it does not bounce back into the opposite direction which we needed to do so i think i may have figured it out and why it's not doing that and the main reason is because we need to add a physics mater material i think it is to a to the ball um and to do that obviously we're only using ChatGPT to write our code because it, it's, it can't really do anything else other than give you text output. Um, so today we're going to go back into the project and start getting that working. And if that eventually does start to work, we are going to move on and try and do something fancy with the ball, uh, which I think I may have announced in the previous episode, but if not, uh, you'll figure that out, or you'll, I'll let you know what that is as soon as we get the, the ball to actually bounce off the, uh, off the paddles correctly. So let's go and jump back into our display here. So on our ball, actually, in our project here, we need to create another folder and that is g going to be this is going to be called our uh, materials and then in here let's open it up and let's create a new physics uh, where is it physics which one is it? Phys we need to create a new physics material. There it is. Physics material. And this is going to be... Hold on, let's see what this is. It needs to be rather a 2D physics material. Because we are creating a 2D game, we need to go and delete this. And delete that. And then create another one. Why is Unity being a bit slow? So create... Uh, 2d physics material 2d okay so uh, we in here we don't want a friction so we're gonna set that to zero and our bounciness i believe needs to be one we'll save that and then on our ball we can go and add in our new physics material and drag that into our material there so now that should um that should solve our issue of our ball not bouncing off our paddles so let's go play the game and see if uh, if it actually bounces. Okay, so it doesn't do that. So back to square one. Let's go back to our code here. And I want to change this line of code here to um, something that we are going to write ourselves just to see if this does work. So instead of adding velocity to it, I want to go ahead and say rigid body. And this is something we probably could get ChatGPT to generate for us, but I mean, it's one line of code. It's, it's we might as well just write it ourselves. So let's add a force of uh, I think it's vector two dot right because we're gonna it could be right or left, but we'll go for right for now. And then we want to times that by our speed. But I think we are going to rename that. Actually, let's go and rename that. We don't want this to be equal to speed. We don't want this to be called speed. Rather, let's go and call it uh, ball force. And then we'll replace that over there, just because that makes more sense, right? Because we're adding force to it. So let's go and see. So our speed here, or our, add our force now, is set at 10. So let's go and see um, what exactly happens. So let's go play the game now and hopefully 
our ball will bounce off of our paddle, which it does. But the problem is, it is still, um, it's bouncing off of the paddle, but then, why can't I get rid of this? Let's set that to one. It's not going all the way back, so, actually, let's see. Um, so what I think is happening is because we put this in update, um, it's always going to apply the right force to it. So we might have to add in a little bit of a check to see if it's collided with a uh, paddle, depending on which paddle it is, go and flip the direction. So let's see what this does. So. So you can see it does kind of work, but it's not going all the way back to this paddle, which is what we want it to do. So, although I think this is getting bigger and bigger, is it? Not really. I mean, kind of. So if we leave it, eventually it will um, it will reach the other paddle, but that's not what we want. Um, what I want to do here quickly is let's go and move our right paddle slightly slightly down so we can see so it is yeah so that's not what we want because we want that ball to continuously hit this uh, roof here not the roof the boundary and then kind of change direction and go into the direction of this other left hand side paddle so we've got some fixing to do <coughs> So what we want to do here, or at least what we want to try and do here is, let's try this and see if we can do it. So in, up here, let's go and create a new boolean and say private, private boolean uh, direction, or rather let's go and say, Moving right. And that is going to be set to true by default because we are going to start the game off by ascending the ball in the right direction. So, in our update method here, here we can go and say if uh, moving right, let's go and add force in the right direction with the ball force of 10. Else, we will copy that and then we will paste it over there but we want to do this uh, the same thing but we will add a left force to it so let's save that and now we need to go into our paddle here and to do that uh, actually I'm going to make this slightly easier what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new global script here just so that we can keep this um, what is it called? The I literally just made it. Um, it's going to be called moving right. So we're going to put that in a global script. Why is Unity so slow today? I hope this is not slowing down the computer again because I just got it. So create a new C sharp script and it's going to be called global. That's not how you spell global. So. We will go and open that up. <coughs> Why is that opened up there? So let's go and actually pong panel. You know what? I'm just going to open it up from here. So we'll open this up and we can get rid of that because we don't need those yet. Or at least I don't think we will need them for this game. So in here we'll create a public static uh, and then it's public public static boolean uh, it's going to be called moving right because that is what we called it in the previous one and this is going to be set to equal to true by default so we can set that to true and save it and then go back into the ball script here and instead of having this over here we can go and delete that and then here we can just go and say global dot moving right 
So if it's moving right, then go and add some right force. If not, move, move it left. Okay, so now in the paddle script here, on collision, actually, we can do it in here because we have an on collision uh, function already on our ball. So, if actually, yeah, let's do that. So let's get rid of this because we don't really need that. We'll go put it back to how we had it because I thought we had to do the check um, for collision on the paddle script, but we don't. We can do it in our ball script. So we will leave that like that and then. Uh, here in our on collision entity, we can go and add another if statement and say if the collision dot game object dot tag um, do we have tags on it? So this needs to be. I feel like we're going to have a paddle tag on both of them, which is not going to be helpful because we need a way of uh, distinguishing which one is which so paddle and paddle okay so let's see paddle so we need the paddle tag so let's go and say game object dot name we'll try name and see if that works so if the game object dot name is equal to the uh, this is going to be equal to We will set that equal to right paddle, but <coughs> so the thing is, this needs to be the exact same as the name in the actual Unity hierarchy here. So we will go and copy that and paste that in here just to make sure that it is the exact same thing. And we're going to duplicate that. So we just created a right paddle a read any string, which means you can't edit it. And we will also create a left paddle read only string which also means you cannot edit it so left and right paddle so now we can do this uh, comparison so if the name of the game object that it collides with is equal to the uh, right paddle then we want to go and say uh, we can, don't have to say global here we can say moving right is equal to true and then we can also say if the collision dot game object dot name is equal to the left paddle we want to go and do the opposite and say moving right is equal to false and having done this I have no clue if this is actually gonna work but let us see if it works so we'll go back into our unity project here and see what this error is so that error is gone so let's go play the game and see what happens so the ball should go right uh it goes doesn't go left okay clearly there is a problem so to see if this is actually working i'm what we're we gonna do in our collision enter 2d method here let's go and say debug dot log uh, and then here we will say moving right this needs to be a string this is just to check so moving right is equal to true and uh, moving right is equal to false actually you know what let's just simplify this let's just say moving right and this is going to be moving left. I mean, because that's pretty much the same thing. So, save that. Jump back into the game. And let's have a look and see if this works. It's probably not going to work because we didn't really change anything other than add two debug lines. So, let's play the game and see what we're getting. So, in our console here, we should get, as soon as it collides, moving right. Okay. Moving right. But, I realize now... When we collide with the right paddle, we want to set this to equal to false so that it moves in the opposite direction. And then the same thing for the left paddle. When we collide with the left paddle, we want to say moving right is equal to true because we want it to go and move right. So this is going to be equal to true. So we'll save that and then go back and see this work. 
Hopefully, we can only hope. So eventually when the star finishes compiling, we can go and play the game. And then <coughs> hopefully that will be sorted for our ball. But I doubt it. So moving right, bounces. Okay, so clearly that's not working. So on our left paddle, do we have a box collider? We do. We have a ridge body and what's different? Okay. Left, no, bottom more. All right. Let's try and make this equal to false and just see if it works uh, on the first run before it collides. Compare tag paddle, um, pa ball hit paddle. I still don't really understand what is happening here. But let's see. So let's play the game. We might actually have to delete that because I don't know what that's for. Um, we don't really need that, I don't think. So let's play the game and see what that actually does. So left. Okay, so it does work, kind of. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this method here because I don't think we need that. I mean, I think that's just a waste of time. So I'm going to get rid of that. Uh, new direction. I'm also going to get rid of this. And maybe, just maybe this will work without... Um, doing all of this. So I'm going to just comment that out quickly. I'm going to copy that and then I'm going to uncomment this line just to make sure and see if it was that method that we had that chat GPT wrote for us that was making that error because we don't really need to do all of this checking if the ball is moving right or left because I have made a game if you remember in if you've if you remember in uh, I think it was the breakout game I think uh, where we had the ball on the paddle and you launched the ball okay so that clearly doesn't work but if you remember in the breakout game where we had this game actually let's see here if we can play it <coughs> So in this game, it's pretty much exactly what we want. So you have your paddle here that moves from left to right and you press space and it bounces up and down. Um, and then you can see um, the ball is continuously bouncing it's as if it's hitting a wall. So that's pretty much exactly what we want, but clearly we can't get that to, re we can't replicate that in this game for some reason. So we need to, First of all, I'm going to change this because I don't like the size of it. 0.5 by 0.5. Okay, so let us go and do this. Let's go and get rid of that and then uncomment that. And then I'm just going to play the game now quickly and see what that does. Not that that will fix anything. But let's go and see. Play the game, turn it on, and let's see, bounces off. Okay, so it, th there's something happening here. So every time... I feel like it's increasing the force every time, which is not what we want. So let's have a look and see what we did in our other game. So this is our script from our um, ball script on our breakout game. So when we start the game, we go and start the position. Yeah, no, we don't need any of that position. We set the position of the ball to that, uh, and then in uh, in the update, if the global script, so if the game is not paused, go and add the force. So if the ball is in play, so ridge body dot add force vector two dot up times ball force, which and our ball force is a massive five hundred. Okay, wow. Well. Uh, and then where else are we doing ball in play is equal to true. Okay, so on trigger. If you collide with outbound, that's just going to destroy it. The, okay, so that handles all of that. That's just going to play the animations. Okay, so technically we don't really need any of the stuff that we are doing here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to go and copy that line of code, which is over here. Because this is technically all we need. I'm going to put that in there and we just need to change that to rigid body like that um, and then I'm going to save that 
that should work because um, the we have got out of bounds bar barriers here so not out of bounds but uh, we've got like more barriers so that if it does hit it it will bounce should bounce off into the opposite direction so let's go play the game and see what happens so that bounces off but it's still not doing the right thing so let's see what we need to do is we need to check clearly that bouncy effect material particle system whatever it's called it's not doing what we want, so bounciness is ne it needs to be equal to 1. I'm pretty sure we said that equal to 1. This might be a long episode because we're not going anywhere until we figure this out, I hope. Um, so let's go materials. Let's have a look at that material that we just created now and see what we can do different. So bounciness is equal to 1 and friction is equal to 0. So that's what we want. Then on our ball here, we need to... A ball force is equal to 1. Let's set that equal to 500 just because we have it in our... Um, in our uh, breakout game so let's see rigid body dynamic yeah new physics material 2d simulated yeah use auto mass is equal to one linear drag discrete start awake we'll freeze the rotation on the z axis that's fine circular collider this is pretty much exactly the same so don't know why it's not working. Pink effect, all those all effects. Strange. Let's go and see. Not that we changed anything, but let's see what that force does. Okay, that's not what we want. So, I need to try and figure out why this is not working. You know what, I'm gonna get rid of this because I feel like that's there for no reason. Let's get rid of that and then in here, let's see what happens. We should play the game and see that it works. When it eventually loads, so play the game. And now, did that, let's see. Let me change this back to 10 because Clearly, it's different. So, play the game now, and hopefully, what is happening? Where is our barriers? So, set that to one. So that's definitely hitting there, but every time it hits, it bounces more. Um, Let's go into our script. Where's our script? It is over here and see. Add force factor two dot up and uh, ball. There is no reason for this not to be working. I don't see any reason. So, which is very confusing. It's making me very confused. Because that's fine, that's got a bounciness of 1. Let's get a friction of 0, so it should be fine. We added that onto our ball, our, yeah, pong ball material on our ridge body. Let's drag it in again and see if it works. Um, linear drag is set to that. Gravi it's no gravity because we don't want it to fall, we just want it to move at a constant speed around the scene. Collision is discrete. Um, sleeping mode, stay, start awake. Let's see, circle collider. Let's see, is there anything else? Paddle, let's have a look at our paddle. Uh, paddle script, we have a rigid body, global manager, Rituity. Let's look on here, right paddle. 
<clears throat> a mass of one, a gravity of zero, obviously zero, zero, yeah, discrete state after wake, none, uh, no physics, dynamic, um, speed 10, axis name vertical, player number two, that we could probably get rid of that because we don't really need that. It's just chat GPT um, writing stuff that's not necessary. So, <clears throat> okay. Clearly, we still haven't figured this out. And I feel like um, this is way more complicated than it needs to be. Because if we were doing things on our own without chat GPT, we probably would have got this done by now, as we did in the other game. Um, but that's not the case so let us we don't really want to sit here and just stare at the computer so what we're going to do is we are going to create another chat in chat gpt and we are going to ask it another question and we're going to make it do something for our ball whenever it hits a paddle we want to change the ball so we're going to forget about the the bounce back for now and then i'm going to do some research into how to fix that so that we don't have to sit here and waste time uh, and then in tomorrow's episode, we will fix that, hopefully. But for now, in our ball script here, when we go and collide with our paddle, I'm going to create a new method. Actually, let's go and ask ChatGPT to do it, because that's the whole um, object of this series. So, in our uh, text box here, let's go and ask it to... Uh, actually, let's go and try and do it in our previous file if that opens because then we can reference the code from above hopefully but what we want to do is we want to go and ask the chat GPT to go and change the color of the ball for now whenever it hits a paddle and gets bounced back into the opposite direction so we will do that if this ever loads, which I don't think it is going to. So let's just go back to a new chat here. And in here we can ask it to write a script. So write a C sharp unity script for a pong ball to change the color of the ball to a random color when when colliding with a paddle let's see how well it does with that i feel like that's that's enough information it needs because we have a ball we have a paddle when they collide we want to change to a random color huh. Um, let's see. The thing is with ChatGPT, I've noticed that whenever I'm not using it on this video, uh, it works perfectly fine, and whenever I am using it, it just takes forever. Which is so annoying. But let's just wait for it. Let's wait for it and see what it comes up with. So hopefully it doesn't take too long. We might have to ask it again. Might have to just reload the page. It's never taken this long when I'm not recording these videos, so that's a bit of annoying. Okay, so that's clearly not working, but what I wanted to do is, in our Pong ball here, let's go create a, another method called change. Not that, what is that? I hate it when it does that. Change color of change ball color this is going to be a private that's not how you spell private private void change ball color and then we are going to Yeah, we don't need, don't need to pass. Let's have a look and see. So this, okay, so it does, it's working. So, okay, ball change color, ball color change. So this, we want to render, rend, okay. Uh, 
Huh. Let's have a look and see. So it's getting the renderer component off of the off of the ball, I would assume. So on collision with a paddle, go and change the color to a random color from the this this um, array here of colors. So what I am going to do is make sure to attach the script to the pong ball game object in your scene. So on collision enter. Okay, so you know what? Let's go and do exactly what it says. So let's go and get rid of this. Uh, and because we do have a tag of paddle on our paddles, both of them, in fact, we the script, as long as it fits in and works properly with our script, it should work straight away. So let's go and create another script. And this is going to be called, I think it was... Pong ball, I can't remember, actually, let's just go and say ball color change. We'll have to rename it because um, it needs to be the same as the actual name of the script. So we'll copy or we'll select all of that and paste that in there. And then we will copy that, save it, and then go back into here. Paste this into our name of our script because that just needs to be the same so that we can look it up in our editor and attach it to our ball. So I kind of like this because it is separating the this part of the code that handles the changing of the color um, and adding it into a new script, which is kind of nice. It keeps our scripts uh, nice and tidy. So on here, let's go and paste that on there. And what we need to do, actually, I don't think we need to do anything because we don't have any fields here that um, we drag and drop because these are private. So it should, on, on the start of the game, should go and get the renderer component. So let's go and play the game and see if it works. It should work with a sprite render, I guess. Let's play the game and see. So obviously <clears throat> this is not going to work because we need to change the direction of the ball so that it hits our paddle. So let's go and say this needs to be right. So that should move until it hits the paddle on the right hand side of the screen. So let's go play that. And let's see if our if our ball actually changes color and then assuming it does that would at least be one thing that chat gpt got right so let's see of course it doesn't work so let's see what's happening what i'm going to do again let's go to chat change color okay so on here let's go and say d bug dot log color change and then this is just to check if this method here is being called whenever it collides with a paddle. Because if it's not being called, then we know where the issue is. So let's go and play the game again and see eventually when this loads. Pong ball moving right is assigned. Okay, so we can see that that is not working, but I think I might know what's wrong. Paddle. Let's go and say dot compare tag and then we can get rid of this and say that and we'll save that let's just make make sure that the paddle tag is correct so on our right paddle we should have a tag um, called paddle and it should be exactly the same spelling and uppercase and all of that should be the same so paddle so it is correct so let's go play the game again and see if that made any difference. No, it did not. So I feel like the I feel like let's change this to sprite. Sprite renderer, because I feel like that is going to make a difference. Let's test that out. Um what happened to the music? I can't even hear anything. I guess the music's finished. Anyway, not important. Um, hopefully this works, because if it doesn't work, we haven't really had any good luck with this experimenting of ChatGPT. Let's test it out and see what it's like. So, 
No, that's clearly not working. So on a ball, did we add it to the right thing? Yeah, ball change color, ball color change script. Start, I'm going to copy this and paste this over here. Um, and then uh, we'll save that. I just want to see that when we do play the game, hopefully we get do get that message printed out. So that's not so. This is clearly not working. So I think we might have a problem. So let's go and open this script up here and edit it and see. It's the same script. I feel like today is just a day that everything just goes wrong. Okay. Get rid of that, because that clearly is no help. Um, ah, maybe this. On collision, enter 2D. Let's try that. Save that. Uh, collision, that might need to change. Let's see. Pong ball, collision 2D, yeah. Might have to change that to 2D. That should be fine. Uh, let's see if this works, because we have to at least have something go right before we end this episode. When we'll eventually loads. Uh, let's play the script, uh, play the game. Nope. Okay, so it does. Okay, so finally, it's working. You know, I'm actually starting to think now, because we have the white color in the array of colors maybe it was actually working that the first time um it was just always changing into white but i i doubt it because where's our ball gone now um, okay so clearly we need to fix that in the next episode so as long as that's working, that's fine. We can go ahead and end the episode here because things are going wrong and we don't want anything else to go wrong in today's episode. So that is it for today. Um, what else? Um, next episode, we will go and start work, or not start, but we'll go and finally finish off the bouncing of the ball and change direction so that we can get that done and actually have a game to start playing. Um, what else are we going to do? We need to add in some UI for scores um, whenever the ball goes past the your opponent's um, paddle we're going to go and add a score to your count uh, and then the object of the game is just to try and reach as high as you can I guess in terms of score or maybe we can add in like a time limit maybe so if try and get um, a certain amount of points and a certain amount of time so that the game actually en does end uh, and not just when you want it to end. But other than that, I think that's pretty much it for today's episode. Um, but yeah, actually, something else that is coming to this channel uh, soon. I'm, I'm working on the first episode, and that is a devlog. So if you're interested in games like this... Um, I don't know where I was going with that point. But if you're interested in... I'm currently working on a game that may or may not probably won't be released out to the public anytime um just because it's not that great but i have always wanted to work on a private game by myself um, in my spare time and not just do these videos so uh, i'm going to be releasing a devlog on those games like an update maybe once every one episode a week or maybe once one episode every two weeks depending on how much work gets done on that game outside of these videos uh, so I'm currently working on the first episode, so hopefully that will come out mm, very soon. I'm trying to get it out by Friday, but I don't know, it might be out on the weekend or maybe even early next week. But yeah, that's it for today's episode again, so thanks for watching, and I will see you in tomorrow's episode. So goodbye.